Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news of God's endless grace. Your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free than all that hold you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord. John the Baptist calls all people to prepare the Lord's way, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Baptize us with the fire of your Spirit, that we may be a light shining in the darkness. Welcome others as Christ has welcomed us, for he is our light and our salvation. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the land. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. S say it to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother sheep. We'll read the psalm responsibly. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave, you forgave the iniquity of your, of your people. people. You, you pardoned, pardoned all their sin. sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his salvation is at hand for those who fear him, and that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness, Righteousness will go before him, and, and will make a path for his steps. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. 
according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Please join me in a word of prayer. Oh God, we come to you on this second Sunday of Advent to hear your word, to be comforted, to know your peace. Lord, may the words from my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. So, Mary's song, the Magnifica. Hopefully this week you were able to watch our Holden E. Me midweek service and hear Heather and Katie sing that song of Mary that is in that service. It's a powerful song, a powerful witness to what Mary is experiencing. I sort of picture her and singing this song that even though she has just been with Elizabeth and Zachariah, that she leaves them and goes out into the hill country of Galilee, singing like Julie Andrews in The Sound of Music. The hills are alive, <laughs> but she sings, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. And I'm hoping that the neighbors, the people around are seeing her, hearing her story, because it is those people in that neighborhood who need to hear a word that lifts them up and gives them hope, gives them a dream that they can imagine. Good news for them. Good news. We all could use some good news, right? And we got some this week. We heard about how in the UK they have the vaccine that they're going to start distributing. And that actually that vaccine is coming to our country. One of the things we've been hoping and praying for would happen soon is now within reach. Good news indeed as we live through this pandemic that we need something that we can hold on to, that we can have a sense of God's peace. Good news. A reading from Isaiah tells about God offering comfort. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Comfort and peace, what people are longing for, spoken to tenderly to receive a blessing of forgiveness. Can you imagine? Can you imagine all the people living life in peace? Those words from John Lennon. What are those things, those tangible things that bring us peace? I've talked to some of my colleagues lately, and one of the things that they've talked about that brings them peace is sometimes to step away, to step out of the environment. One colleague told me that she just no longer listens to the news. There's nothing she can do to control the outcome, so why bother? Stepping away. Another friend says, I give myself a time out and tell my family and friends and colleagues, I just need some peace and be left alone. Sometimes we all need a time out. Sometimes for me, it's um, pulling out the hymnal, singing those beloved hymns that touch my heart and calm my spirit. Sometimes it's um, calling a close friend. I've mentioned my prayer partner, Libby. We have appointed times uh, twice in the month to get together for intentional prayer. But there have been those occasions for both of us when we just called each other in, out of the blue and said, I need somebody to talk to and process with and pray with. And she and I have done that more than once. <laughs> Tangible things that bring peace. I thought of a hymn that's 
in the Lutheran book of worship called They Cast Their Nets in Galilee. It talks about the fisher folks, the first disciples of Jesus and, and how they worked as fishermen. We may think that fishing is a relaxing, calming task, but if you're doing it for a living, it's hard work. It takes a lot of muscle, a lot of sweat and tears. You have to be repairing your nets and all your equipment. You have to pay attention to the weather and you gotta figure out the variance of where the fish are. Fishing is not easy, but if you get into the groove of it and you get in line with it, it can be worth it. The fourth verse of this hymn is, the peace of God, it is no peace, but strife closed in the sod. Yet let us pray for just one thing, the marvelous peace of God. The first followers of Jesus were regular people, making a regular living, praying for the peace of God. That peace was often strife, but it was worth it. Mary was a regular young woman, and yet she sings a song of life-changing for all God's people. Although she sees herself as blessed, she also lifts up in her song that it means challenges, pain and sorrow, but it will be worth it. So as we live in these days of Advent, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the challenges of what it means to be a faithful community, we need to see that we are worth it. Worth it for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Worth it for the Spirit who stirs us up, stirs up our hearts. Advent may seem like a quiet season, but we are called upon by the Spirit of God to be stirred up, that God may be a work in our lives working to show mercy, to live faithfully, and to seek justice, not just for ourselves, but for all God's people. But as call that is set before us, may we see glimpses of God's justice, for change is a coming. So hold on to hope. Bring peace to your lives, practice joy, and most importantly, choose the love of God. Amen.
Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Advent God, who comes to us in love, peace, and joy, we thank you for love that nourishes and sustains our hearts, for peace that enables us to live in friendship with others, and for joy that inspires our lives and fills us with hope. We enter this new church year ready to renew our relationship with you. Stir up in us a yearning heart, an open mind, and a spirit that seeks your company. And when the day comes when Jesus is born, may he be born in each of us also. We bring before you all things that would rob us of the joy of Jesus' coming. We ask you to help us rid ourselves of all the temporary and earthly concerns of this season so that we may truly focus on you. Lord, we have people in our community with needs beyond our own ability to fix. We thank you for all who attend to the sick, the weary, and the ones who feel separated from you, the church, even each other. Hear our prayers for those whom we name in our hearts who need a special measure of your grace. Lord, we thank you for the life of Pam Brown, our sister in Christ, who was dearly loved by her Salem family. Welcome her into your loving arms and comfort her family here as we mourn her death. Heavenly Father, as we celebrate Advent and prepare for Christmas, help us to find time in our busy lives for quiet and thought and prayer, that we may reflect upon the wonder of your love and allow the story of the Savior's birth to penetrate our hearts and minds. May our joy be deeper our worship more real, and our lives worthier of all that you have done for us through the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is. You have provided for us in every season. Bless all that we offer. Through these gifts of the world, receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is new covenant in my blood shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table set for you, so please come. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, in this meal you give us a foretaste of that day when the hungry will be fed with good things. Send us forth to make known your deeds and to proclaim the greatness of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive this blessing. Creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. <laughs>